Talk Steel Luke here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a little device called OBD11, which connects to any Volkswagen Group cars and not only offers diagnostics but also offers coding. That's right, just like VCDS, but much, much, much cheaper. Let's get into this. <laughs> The device itself is this tiny little thing and it connects directly through Bluetooth to your mobile phone. Now this comes in two flavours, you've got the basic one and you've got the one that's got this little hook system on the top so you can stick a keychain around it. And whether that's worth the extra £10 to you, I'll let you decide. In addition to the device, you're also going to need to buy the Pro software if you want to do the coding, which is going to cost an extra £25, but the cost of the device and the software combined is still less than £60, so much, much cheaper than VCDS. Now the main downside when it comes to the mobile phones is that this connects only to Android. So if you're an iPhone user like me, you're out of luck. Well, not so much as luck. You can buy an old device for £20 off eBay and connect it through that, but it would be really nice to see iOS compatibility straight out of the box. In order for this OBD11 device to work, we need to follow a few steps. Firstly, whichever phone or tablet you're using, you need to make sure that it's got data connection active because OBD11 requires data connection to do all its uh, scans and its functions properly, which is one of the major setbacks, and I'll get back to that in a second. So you either need to connect to Wi-Fi, um, either just have an active data plan on your SIM card, or like I tend to do on my iPhone, um, I just open a personal hotspot and connect that way. Once the app is booted, just hit that big connect button to connect to the scan tool. You'll then get asked what vehicle you want to connect to. You can select a vehicle from a saved list, like my A4 here, or you can add new vehicles by clicking list or entering the VIN. And here we are, ready to use. The app basically has three layers to it. The first layer is an in-depth scan tool that's part of the free version. Just go ahead and hit that scan button and it'll perform an in-depth scan of all your car's systems. Anyone who's familiar with Volkswagen Electronics will know that they're split up into control modules, which basically means the car groups certain systems together. As you can see, my car has 12, yours may vary. Let's just give it a couple of minutes to go through them all. As you can see, clicking the bottom right button brings up all the control modules available to my car. Modules that have a green circle in the top right are ones of no faults. So as you can see here, there's a fault in my AC system. Clicking the module will show what faults have occurred. I like that it gives you information rather than just a code. You can clear these faults by holding the trash can in the bottom right. Faults in all modules can be cleared by holding the clear button on the previous page. This brings me on to one of the main annoyances I've found. There's no way to perform a full scan after you've done it for the first time. The scan button just disappears. And the only way I've found to get back is to disconnect the device and reconnect. Sure, you can go into the control module and scan that individual module, but I'd like to always be able to perform a full scan when I want. I'm sure this could be added in the future. As I said before, there's three main layers to this device. The second one is something called apps, which can be thought as, as more of a macro function. You can think of this as automatic coding, Rather than you diving into the car settings yourself and manually altering certain values, this is more of a one-click and forget method. And this is really good if you're not too confident about messing around with the car systems yourself. My car doesn't have too many macros available since it's pretty old, but there's tons more on newer VW Group cars, which I'll show you in a minute. But let's go ahead and do one of them though. I want my alarm to make a little beep when I lock the car since I'm always forgetting whether I've done it. So I'll click the acoustic confirmation macro at the top right, I'll switch it to on and I'll hold the green tick and it's as easy as that. The downside of these macros is that you have to pay for them, even if you have the pro version. This cost me 10 credits which is roughly about £1.50 at the moment. You can see the amount of credits you have in the bottom right of the screen and how much it will cost in the macro thumbnail. The thing is, I still like this method because it's much cheaper than getting someone else to do it. And as you see in a second, there's so much more available on newer cars. Here I've added a newer A4 to the device just to show you what's available. 
As you can see, there's loads of stuff that would like needle sweeps, reverse mirror dips, inverse top start buttons, etc. Just note that some macros cost more than 10 credits. For example, the MMI upgrade costs 100. The third layer of this app, and the one that really got me interested, is the coding. This is a feature only available on the pro version, and if you don't know what coding is, I'm not going to go into it in this video. But please check out what VCDS can do to get a better idea of how it works. But essentially, it allows you to manually program your car. On here, it's a case of going into your control module and altering the values and clicking save. Now, there's one major problem I've found with this device, and that's a need an active data connection to be able to connect to your car. So here, I'm going to disable my Wi-Fi and disconnect from my car by going back to the home screen on the app. So let's go and reconnect to the car with no Wi-Fi or 4G active. As you can see, the device is not authorised. So without a data connection, it just won't connect. And to me, this is one of the biggest reasons why this tool won't be suitable to professionals. If you're out and about and you need to connect to someone's car, you can't guarantee that it's always going to be a 4G or Wi-Fi signal. I don't like that lack of functionality in the app. With the memory available on modern smartphones and tablets, I'd really like to see an offline version where you could at least download the relevant information for your particular car. I've also found with a weak data connection that it will authorise and connect, but when scanning the control modules, it'll only scan two or three of them since it can't get the data for them all. And that's the main reason why I can't, at least at the moment, recommend this tool on a professional level, but for the driveway enthusiast, we can probably at least get a Wi-Fi signal. It represents excellent value for money and does what it sets out to do fairly well. There's no doubt that over the course of a couple of years of VW ownership that this device will easily pay for itself. Anyway, consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. But as always, thank you for watching, stay safe and see you all again very soon.